Hey guys, I just wanted to do a quick follow-up on Heidi Baker because I realized that I left out some important clips that also add to understanding better what she represents. The first thing we're going to look at is what Heidi says is the Great Commission. You'll find that it's quite different than the Bible, and we'll look at a couple more other things as well. The Great Commission. Uh, that's the reason we're alive. We're alive because we're commissioned by God. Think of it. The God who created the universe. God who created us. The one whose image we're made in called us to go and let everybody find out who he is. That every child on the planet, man, every man, every woman, every child, every person of every race, of every socioeconomic background would find out that the God of the universe made them and loves them and wants them as his sons and daughters. So why would you not want to give your life for that? I mean, it's the greatest privilege that exists on the face of the planet that you and I, that we could be possessed by the spirit of the living God and in love, by love, compelled by love, through love, go out there and let people know they have a home and they have a daddy and they have a savior and they too can be filled and possessed by Holy Spirit. Great commission. Let's all go and find and seek the lost and bring them home. Okay, so there we have it, folks, the Great Commission according to Heidi Baker. Now, she started off good by paraphrasing what it says in Mark 16, 15. He said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. But apparently her gospel is simply that God made them, loves them, and wants them as sons and daughters, and that they can be possessed by Holy Spirit. And just to be clear, God doesn't possess anyone. We surrender our lives to him and invite him into our lives. Possession is a forcible takeover against someone's will. And that's what demons do. And once again, she mentioned Holy Spirit, not the Holy Spirit. So maybe the spirit she's talking about does possess someone. So let's take a look at what the dictionary translates the gospel is. It says the message about Jesus Christ's life, death, and resurrection, the kingdom of God, and salvation through Jesus. That sounds a bit more detailed than the message she gave because with Heidi's message, as with what seems to be the message of all in Bethel and the New Apostolic Reformation, there is no mention of sin or repentance or understanding why we need Jesus for salvation or what we're actually being saved from at all. This is the false gospel that's leading so many astray today. We also saw a clip in her interview with Sid Roth when she explained about seeing angels and Jesus. But let's listen to a good biblical explanation from when we understand the text about this topic. And suddenly I saw an angel on the right, an angel on the left, and Jesus stood behind him and pointed to me. This man's telling the truth. Listen to him. Jesus is between 5'11 and about 6 foot 1. I said, more he's taller than I thought he was. And he put his hand on this shoulder and he looked at me. He said, go tell my people I'm coming. I stood there and uh, I was at the Lord's left hand. And it was, this was not a dream. This was as real as life here. And he said, young man. I can feel him like he, it's like he's walking up to me across the room and just tapping me on the shoulder. Kim. And I'm standing with Jesus, and I see God the Father in front of me. There are teachers who will claim to have had a face-to-face -face conversation with God himself, but it's a lie. How can we know that? For lots of reasons, but in short, because Jesus warned that false teachers would claim such things. If anyone says to you, look, here is the Christ, or there he is, do not believe it. For false Christs and false prophets will arise and perform great signs and wonders so as to lead astray, if possible, even the elect. See, I have told you beforehand. So if they say to you, look, he is in the wilderness, do not go out. If they say, look, he is in the inner rooms, do not believe it. For as the lightning comes from the east and shines as far as the west, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. The next appearance of Christ will be seen by the whole world, not a select few in secret. Joseph Smith claimed that God the Father and Jesus Christ appeared to him and told him the church had become an abomination. So Smith started his own church full of destructive heresies. He was a charlatan, and so is every other modern-day false prophet claiming to have had a personal audience with God. 
God, we will hear in their teaching many other lies when we understand the text. Wow, they're all knocked down. <laughs> Shaka Baba. Yay, happy birthday! Shaka Raba. Of Ezekiel 47. Shaka Raba Santu. When someone talked about Shaka Baba, whoa, apostolic anointing. Hi, I'm Andrew Strom, author of the book Kundalini Warning, Are False Spirits Invading the Church? The stuff that's been invading in the last, say, 16 to 17 years, I believe it's the worst invasion in church history. Disturbing stuff coming in uh, while I was involved. Hate, I actually hated church, hated missionary work, loved Jesus though, Jesus is nice. It's all the rest of you people that make me sick. In Hinduism, one of the most common ways of experiencing a kundalini awakening is through a guru placing his hand upon your forehead. Whoa! More Lord. Everybody, place, place that anointing. That crown, that gift upon someone else's head. <laughs> Keep praying. Every single one of you, impartation, legacy, legacy, legacy. Place it on another one's head. Fire. <laughs> legacy, legacy. As The greatest thing you've ever seen in your life. Prophesy over them ten times. This is called Shakti Pat, and when they do that, you'll be infused with this incredible love and this wave of emotion. You'll fall down. There'll be all these manifestations, maybe animal noises, uh, joy and weeping and shaking. This is a Kundalini awakening, and amazingly, it is exactly the same as what we have been seeing. Now one of the very clearest signs of a Kundalini awakening has always been these Kriyas. You see this woman involved in the New Age movement, she's walking along exhibiting these Kriyas happening, involuntary uh, jerking motions. And the staggering thing about it is that we are seeing again and again and again these exact same type of kriyas this has always been one of the clearest signs of kundalini that we know of kundalini is like a false holy spirit it produces even miracles and healings infusions of love and power and energy and i'm going to have my wife jessa share a dream that she had And I'm going to tell you what God's been speaking to me about. And I believe it's the key that's going to release the greatest miracle anointing for the church. So a couple of nights ago, I had a dream where Oral Roberts was speaking to Todd. They were, I, I didn't understand what they're saying. Wild elephant. I see a wild elephant. And then I, by getting a hope from God, um, whew, getting... <laughs> Getting a hope from God <laughs> to be able to see, to discern the times and the seasons that's ahead of you. And the thing about the elephant, it wasn't just an ordinary elephant, it was a wild elephant. A wild elephant. It was radical, 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 radical. <laughs> And the elephant 
all these kinds of things and yet it's the Hindu version of the Holy Spirit and it's not holy. What do fish represent? Huh? People? Souls? Fish? I like that there are many kinds. You know, God likes to mess us up. He likes to send in strange fish. Weird fish. Strange fish. Strange weird fish. He likes it. He likes the fact that we're different. He likes the fact that we're all different. He likes to send in strange weird fish. Mess up your church. He likes to mess up your church. In lots of love, he loves to mess up your church. Watch out. People may be swimming on your carpet. Being intimate with a living God. Knowing a touch from a living God. Understanding how much he loves you. Understanding who you are.